Hey, my name is Dan Gerson, and in this uh, video, I'll show you how you can create a sync async bridge in PI without using BPM. Uh, so the use cases of where you want to do this is if you have a synchronous web service uh, or you want to expose something externally as a synchronous but you are connecting with uh, some asynchronous adapters like a DMS or a file or something that has a delay in. Most often this would be a DMS uh, setting you, you want that. Uh, one thing you have to bear in mind in this pattern is that need to be running on the same server. So if you have a clustered and for instance is using a file adapter, you need to specify that this adapter should only run on this specific node or something like that. Otherwise, uh, it could lead to some inconsistencies because the, the data is not the same place. Uh, or the response message is not the place where it's listening for it. So the way this works is, for instance, in my setup, I have a REST uh, best effort service. It could be any uh, SOAP service or whatever it would be like. Then we are putting the message through our normal synchronous iFlow and putting it into our file communication ch channel. In this case, this is exactly once and also down here. Uh, this is normal file processing, but we would set up message processing and then we would have a uh, I'll set it up as this is uh, this needs to be uh, split and then we'll wait for a response message then we are creating a new iflow that is listening on a communication channel where we're setting up um sending the message with the collation id that correspond to the the id of this uh, iflow up here and then we would send a notification that will then continue this wait step we have up here. So it's a little of a hack. Um, and then that we don't have anything more on this one. So we need to configure either an iFlow or just a send agreement if we have a system that support that. So the way this works here, we have a file receiver a module. So we put the request one way being here that has a parameter pass through is true. And then we're specifying this wait, and I think the wait bean also have a key that specifies how long time do we want to wait for this message. And if it takes longer than this period of time, it would fail back. And if we look at the configuration here, we're having dynamic configuration bean. And in this, we are setting up a parameter for file name, write file name, uh, or write file and would write the file name into the correlation ID here. Um, so let me just show you how this looks or what this looks like. We'll go to our system. Um, so I've set it up here in uh, the iFlow here. So here I have uh, my normal REST adapter. I think the only thing here is that this is best effort. So it's synchronous. Then we have our file here. It is saving message into a file. We have set up this uh, ID and here we're getting the message ID using this variable substitution, which is a good way to do it. We could also have done it using dynamic properties, but I guess this is a lot easier because I don't have to do anything else. Um, um, so I don't have any mapping or anything else uh, running this scenario. Uh, we need to set it to create and not duplicate because or set with timestamp something like that that will cause some problems um, and then we have our modules so here we set the request one way being and the wait response being after the call to the call sub adapter if we look at the response iflow um, so here I've had this file async here uh, so I've used the interface not to, just to make sure that's never used. Um, if I had a release where I could create this as a, um, a send agreement, it would also be possible. So the file item, I'm reading the same directory. So I'm just making sure I have this directory open. Um, then in my module, I have this dynamic configuration being I read this value 
and then the notify response beat would then return it into the other one. Uh, if we run the scenario, here it's just any scenario, data, we're sending data. If we look at this system, let's try again. So we can see we're getting a message that's then being pulled uh, within a few seconds. So if we look at the message monitor, So we can see we got just one flow here, one message back and forth. No, this should be two. Right. Hmm. Sync flow, there should be a response on this one. So if we look here, at, ah, this is the response. Um, maybe it's this one that's the start of this flow the post so if we just look at the parameters we're setting so we have some ut settings on modules we we save the file and then we have this wait response bean it received this message so they have built something into this wait response bean getting the data back and then it's being processed in this flow up here notify response bean and setting data back um, so there's uh, the ERT testing applications on top of this just to test that it works um, so that was how this worked so if you want to see more patterns go to picost.com forward slash patterns and I also also share uh, uh, Async sync bridge, the other one, and the reprocessing pattern. So have a look there. Thanks. Bye.